Despite the majority of structures being dismantled after the 1904 World's Fair, traces of its legacy persist throughout St. Louis. From iconic landmarks and Forest Park, to notable structures on the campus of Washington University, remnants can even be found in homes across the region. Public historian Adam Cloppy highlights the far-reaching impact of the fair. After the World's Fair ended on December 1st, 1904, the process of dismantling the fair began. Most of the fair's 1,500 structures were designed to be temporary, and in the months after the fair's closure, a wrecking company was brought in to tear down everything from the grand palaces to the attractions on the pike. After they were done, the fair was gone. When St. Louisans today look back at photographs of the fair, it can be hard to place exactly where those images were taken. It seems like some other place, like something out of a dream. However, you can still find the World's Fair in St. Louis if you know where to look. The first place to go if you're looking for the fair would be Forest Park. Within the park itself, you can find two structures that haven't moved since the fair. The first is the St. Louis Art Museum. It served as the Palace of Fine Art at the fair and was the only palace that was meant to be a permanent structure. The other building that remains in the park is the flight cage at the zoo. Originally erected by the Smithsonian, the flight cage was meant to be dismantled after the fair and rebuilt elsewhere. But St. Louisans liked the flight cage so much that they purchased it and then built a world-class zoo around it. In addition to this, several of the older structures on the campus of Washington University, like Brookings Hall, were used as a part of the fair. As the fair was being planned and built, Washington University was in the process of moving from downtown St. Louis to what is today known as the Danforth campus. In order to help pay for the construction of this new campus, the original buildings were leased to the fair. After the fair was over, the buildings were given back to Washington University. The school moved to the campus in 1905. But it's not just these landmark structures that are still standing from the fair. Throughout the metro area, you can find homes that were used as a part of the fair. For example, there's a house in Webster Groves that was originally constructed as part of a display for the American Radiator Company to show off their wares at the fair. After the fair was over, someone bought the model home from them and rebuilt it. Homes like this dot the St. Louis landscape and beyond. You can find structures from the fair that were rebuilt in Kansas, Indiana, and Oklahoma. And depending on how old your house is, you may also be living with parts of the fair every day. As the palaces of the fairgrounds were being demolished, salvage crews sold lumber, nails, doors, and other pieces of the fair to builders and construction companies. They used those materials to build new houses, offices, churches, and stores, not just in St. Louis, but around the country. A little piece of the fair might be living in your house today, even if you don't know it. To learn more about the Missouri Historical Society, visit mohistory.org.